This is one of Britain's most iconic racetracks. We've seen the likes of Ayrton Senna, Emerson Fittipaldi and Jim Clark all win races here. And this weekend, it's this lot's turn as they take to the Grand Prix circuit here at Brands Hatch for round four of Lotus Cup Europe. Who will join our list of winners? Well, let's find out. Over the last few programmes, we've taken a look at the 211s and the production cars. And this week, it's the turn of the Exige class. What is it about these cars that appeals to the drivers? Well, in this particular case, we've had it specially built with a paddle shift. Um, so in many respects, it's similar to drive to a Ferrari. Um, I suppose I've got out of sync with um, stick shifts, as I would call them, as the Americans call them. But uh, it really has come together rather well. We built it last year. Um, it's quite quick. Uh, and it handles extremely well. So, you know, one of the reasons I built it was to get from it what I've just really said, a paddle shift car in, in a Lotus, but with the, with the Honda engine. So it, it does perform and handle extremely well. And I see you've got two cars out this weekend. Mm -hmm. We have, we've got the Ixtige and the Elise. And um, BJ's driving this one. Um, he's had more experience than I have of actual racing with Lotus in particular. So uh, I, would, I would probably anticipate he will do better than me. <laughs> well, we'll find out soon. Thank Absolutely. you. Paul, it looks like you've literally come straight from a cornfield. Well, just about. We uh, got rained off combining last night, got up this morning, still raining, watching the forecast, watching the uh, live, live free practice on the well, results and thinking, hmm, I'd rather be driving. So gave quick Paul a quick call and uh, somehow we managed to get here. So you literally made a last-minute decision this morning, tra trailed the car all the way here? Yeah, a bit of an eventful trip. What normally takes about an hour and a half, took three hours, thanks, thanks to the M25, and pulled, pulled his usual magic and uh, uh, pulled all the stops out and we got me through scrutineering, got all the car checked over, me checked in, signed in, and here we are. Unbelievable. And how was qualifying? Uh, not too bad at all. Uh, luckily, I was here a fortnight ago, uh, and yeah... Just stayed, tried to stay out of trouble, just trying to remember where I was going. And yeah, I think I qualified about 30 seconds out of, out of the grid, so pleased with that. Well, very nice too. So when are you back to combining? Uh, possibly tomorrow, if, well, they will be. I'll have to give them a call and see if, if it's just too dry. But I think it's going to rain, it'll be all right. And if it rains here, even better. Jonathan, tell me, what appeals to you about the Exige? Um, I wanted a sports car to have some fun, and uh, the Exige is just a great, fantastic car on the road, but when you get it on track, that's really where it uh, is, is the fun car, and it's the right place to have the car on the track. And in terms of preparation for the races, who does that for you? Uh, I've done it all my own. Uh, I've done it by myself. I've uh, got no big team behind me. Um, takes time, but actually, if, if you're methodical, it's not that difficult to do. So how have you gone about learning how to run the car? Um, really just by feel. I did a lot of track days before I started racing um, and talking to everybody else around the pits. You know, everybody's very helpful in Lotus on track, um, very friendly. So it's, it's feel and, and talking to other people. And being new to racing as well here at Brands Hatch, this is your first visit, right? It is. Never done the track before. So I'm um, going out this morning for uh, first practice was uh, quite interesting. It's a fantastic track. Um, learnt a lot and looking forward to qualifying this afternoon. Do you think we'll see you on the podium? Uh, I would doubt that very much, but obviously uh, in the future that's where I'm aiming. Uh, I've got some goals today, there's a few guys that I want to beat. Uh, I want to put some uh, better times together than this morning, but uh, it's just carry on improving, you never stop learning. We've heard from our Exige drivers and now it's time to join them in race one to see how they get on. This is a 20 minute race from a standing start. Let's take a look at the full grid. As ever a capacity field from the Lotus Cup Europe here at Brands Hatch this weekend. Pole position should have gone to Gavin Kirby, but he was taken low overnight, so the pole position spot will be empty for races one and two today. Roman Rotro, therefore, all alone on the front row of the grid. Further back, plenty of adventures in qualifying. I mean, the likes of Marcus Jewell and Stuart Plotnet could go well in their production class Elise's. Donald Cannard showing very well thus far this season. Steve Quick also could be expected to be a contender, having gone very rapidly in the opening Lotus on track Elise Trophy race of the year on the Indy circuit. Very, very full grid with 40 cars being rounded out by Gregor Zechka 
And then on the back row of the grid, Jose Vazlan and Michael Corridon, who had a lot of problems in qualifying yesterday. Paul Baker starting from the pit lane as the red lights go on. They guys, a terrible start from Rotoro. A very good start there for from Scott Crookshank and Steve Williams. And it's Williams in the yellow car who's going to swoop around the outside of the red number one car of Scott Crookshank into Paddock and take the lead. Will he do so? Yes, he does as the road plunges away. The leading to 11s through safely. Further back, it's sideways and contact. Nigel Ayres scatters his glove trap. Steve Quick as well takes for the action. It's Russell Hill in the silver car who has become beached at the very edge of the gravel trap. Now that could well lead to a safety car intervention. Looks as if Quick is going to rejoin the fray. Unfortunately, Ayres and Hill out of the action already. Steve Williams leading this wonderful field through Graham Hill Bend for the first time, chasing there Gregory Rass in the first of the exegesis. So it's Williams who has the advantage over Crookshank, although Rotro barges through as they go through Surtees and Christoph the Zondra there in the black car also looking to make the move into fourth position we go in David Jacobs through Surtees oh dear it goes all wrong he spins around now will he be collected by anybody as the field surges through Jacobs very calm in the cockpit as the safety car does go out we're in car with Nigel Ayres and you can see Russell Hill sliding across nowhere for Ayres to go bang into the gravel trap goes Ayres Great shame for him. Let's hope that damage can be repaired for race two. In car with Paul McNeely, and fortunately for him, he goes to the right side of the rotating hill. You can see Stuart Plotner there in the white car as well, just getting out of the way in time. So Ayres bounces into the gravel trap. Steve Quick goes a more slowly through the gravel, but he rejoins the rear of the field as the car's bunching up through Sterling's. The wave yellow flags mean we're still under safety car conditions. Now we're about to go green once more as it's Steve Williams who is leading from Roman Rotro, then Christophe Lissandre in third place as they streak through. Let's get action underway and Rotro has got a very good run. Williams, he looks to the high wide line going into Paddock Hill Bend, breaking incredibly late. Is he going to rush road here? Well, he locks the brakes and he goes to Paddock and across the gravel trap he goes. Drama for the Manny Core race winner, Roman Rotoro as he shuffles all the way down the order. And well, that was really just a bit too optimistic from the Frenchman. He went to the outside, he breaks him possibly late, so now Steve Williams has got a sizable advantage over Christophe Lazandre, Rotoro's Borsier competition teammate, and he has got Scott Crookshank right on his tail. Then it's Tom Chatway going very nicely in fourth place for some Deacon in two, fifth in the all-black 39 machine. There is Deacon making his way through Surtees. Well, a bit of drama there in the pit lane. Marcus Nikovic retiring to the outer paddock as they come. Down Pilgrims dropping into Hawthorne's fantastically fast part of the Grand Prix loop here. And Hawthorne's just slightly cambered. The drivers really can carry the speed through as they then head into Westfield. Breaking very late as Deacon looks to the inside of Tom Chatterway. That's brave from Simon Deacon as they go into Westfield again. The road falling away from the drivers. They go down into Dingledale. That brings them up to the very fast right-hander of Sheen's curve. Exit Sheen curve and then on towards Sterling's the cambered left-hander which really does propel the drivers with quite some force as they make their way into is There also is Mark Gooday who severely damaged his car in the second race at Manny Court. Good to see that's repaired and he's right on the tail of Simon Deacon as you can see as well. Roman Rotoro recovering his way up through the field picking his way past Pete Storey. So it's Steve Williams who leads through with Christoph Lissandra and Scott Crutch and then this great three-way battle which is being headed up by Tom Chatterway, one of Tom's best performances of 2010 thus far. He's got Deacon and Gooday right on his tail. Mark Gooday looks to the inside of Simon Deacon. And, well, that really was very late on the brakes from Mark Gooday. Deacon swooping across, claiming the line to the hairpin at Drew as they go. There is Roman Rotro, who has clearly not been deterred at all by his trip through a gravel trap. So he is now working his way on to tell the Mark Gooday and really for Rotoro, this is absolutely ideal because he's got three cars ahead of him fighting out amongst themselves, which means he can close the gap down. He's got the headlights ablaze. Not sure really that Mark Gooday needs reminding him he's got Rotoro right in his tail as they make their way through Surtees out onto the Grand Prix loop. Plunging down Pilgrim's drop, the 4 to 11s, running line astern in the fight for 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th place. We've also got right there in the mix as well. The third place man, Scott Crookshank, as Rotro has made his way past Mark Gooday. So Rotro gains another position. He goes sixth. He looks to the inside of Simon Deacon. That is for fifth position. They head down into Dingledale, climbing up towards Sheen Curve. You can't really overtake there. It's uh, concerning Rotro too much. He's 
right there on tail of Deacon. Deacon in turn looking to the inside of Tom Chataway as they make their way safely through Sterling's great race this as they then accelerate on towards Clearways which is incredibly rapid on this Grand Prix loop. You can see there the road just falls away from the drivers as it's still Steve Williams in lead. Rotro looks the outside of Simon Deacon. He's not going to find any joy there so instead he hugs the pit wall as they streak along the Ram straight. Another lap consigned to the history books. Up towards the paddock they go as Crookshank now come under some real pressure from Tom Chatterway. This is a great drive from Tom. Scott Crookshank, whose second race at Magny Corp, which was the last meeting for the Lotus Cup Europe, ending in disappointment where he came together with Roman Rotro. Rotro continued to claim second position. Scott Crookshank, fortunately, only continues as far as the nearest marshal's post, buried in the gravel trap. So at the moment, he's got third place. He's got Chatterway right on his tail. Then Simon Deacon, then Roman Rotro. Rotro at the moment passing cars at the rate of one a lap as they fan out almost three abreast going into 30s. It's Crookshank who's lost out to Chatway. He's lost out as well to Deacon. As we watch some of the runners a little bit lower down the order, and that's Gregor Zechka and Steve Quickened. Also, Paul Baker quickened. Baker recovering from a poor start. Quick, we saw going through the track. Baker from the pit lane. So it's now Tom Chatterway in third place with Sam Deacon right on his tail. Then Roman Rotro. They make their way into Westfield and Chatterway moments ago on the offensive, now very much on the defensive. What order will they arrive at Dingle Dell in? Well, the answer is just the same as they climb up towards Sheen Curve once more. With then Mark Gooday also having picked his way past Scott Crookshank. I wonder if Crookshank may have a slight problem because he's been shuffled to the very rear of this group and usually Scott's pace is a little bit quicker than that as Chatterway can see Christophe Lissandre and Steve Williams escaping ahead of the field there goes the race leader Steve Williams there's Christophe Lissandre in second here comes battle for third and the rest as Rotro goes through on the inside of Simon Deacon as they go through clearways so Roman Rotro another position gained along the Brabham straight which isn't straight at all it curves to the right as they climb then up towards Paddock before the road just drops away sharply to the right. Rotro works his way right onto the white rear bumper of Tom Chatterway. Up to Druids they go. Chatterway running a little bit wide but so does Rotro. That gives Simon Deacon half an opening which you can't really capitalise on. They plunge back downhill in towards Graham Hill Bend which is something of a false overtake opportunity and then accelerate along bottom straight on towards Surtees and the Grand Prix loop as they make their way through 30s. We'll go for a break. We'll see you back in a couple of moments' time. 